Hey everyone, I'm back with another update video. So, it is Prism's Movie Cavern here on the 2nd of November, I believe. I think that's what it is. I, I mean, unless the time has just quickly gone past me. Or, is it actually the 4th? It might be the 4th of November. But anyways, I just got back from a three-day trip. On Tuesday, I left for a trip to Half Moon Bay area. And on the way there, while I was there, and on the way back, I did quite a bit of thrift shopping. And today I'm going to show you everything that I got. Now, I do have a few items I am not showing because I do not intend to keep them. They're for other purposes, but everything else I will be showing you. And I've got five Disney tapes, uh, four DVDs, and four Blu-rays slash 4Ks. And I'll talk about why I got uh, one of the 4Ks in a little bit. But first, we're going to start off with the Disney tapes, beginning with Winnie the Pooh and Tigger 2. I couldn't remember if I had this variation, the 1987 tape. Um, I don't remember, but I found this pretty cheap, so I got a second copy. And is there a label in here? Crud. I saw the label in the store. Did it come off? Oh, no, it's down here. It's just stuck to the box. Oh, well, I'll have to tape that on. But, uh, yeah, this is a 1987 copy. Or 1988, actually. It's got a holographic sticker. So I'm going to have to tape that on. Um, but, yeah, there's that. And if it's a duplicate, I will do one of two things. I will keep it or I will sell it. Same with the next tape as well. This tape right here is, I believe, a 1993 copy of The Rescuers Down Under. Got this at Savers for $2, and I wasn't going to take a risk and get a duplicate, except the print date was late enough. Also, I kept the receipt. Um, print date from January 18th of 1994, so I'm pretty sure this is going to be a reprint. I hope so, because I don't want to have another copy that's just a duplicate, but we'll see. Uh, there's no info on this receipt. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll probably block that out of the video. Alright, next we have a Spanish copy of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. This is a tape I got at the St. Vincent's de Paul in Fremont. Print date from February 27th of 1995. And yeah, this was actually a really cool tape to find. I like collecting the Spanish Disney tapes, or any other language really. It also comes with a little, little uh, booklet, which is pretty cool. Haven't had one of these in Spanish, but you've got like... Uh, I can tell that first one's Pretty Woman, because I've seen the cover. I don't know what these other two films are called. Then you have these storybook classes, classics. Uh, Winnie the Pooh, apparently it's a shorter title in Spanish. Disney sing-along songs. Yeah, a very nice little pamphlet. I wasn't trying to get this, but hey, it came with the video, and I'm pretty happy with it. So, I'll take bonuses. But, um... Oops. Yeah, I read the print date already. Alright. And the tape's fine. Uh, so that is it for that tape. And, yeah, it's going to be going in my collection with all my other Spanish and other foreign release tapes. And by the way, good time to make this announcement. I have decided to no longer collect Canadian prints of Disney tapes. Here's why. They, they take up space... And they aren't really that special. Like, they don't have a print date on them. Um, and they have a different warning screen and a slightly different label. But they are just... They're just slight differences. They're not like a different language with, you know, different text and different previews. So, in order to save space, I'm not going to be collecting those anymore. And I kind of made the decision... Uh, when I saw one for $3 at a thrift store, I'm like, that's just a Spanish copy, or Canadian copy, sorry. I don't need to spend that money. But what I did spend my money on this trip was this. 
the 1992 VHS of Tron. This tape is extremely rare. I'm not kidding. Like, I checked some of the prices for this tape on eBay, and booey, they are pretty high. So I'm very happy to get a cheaper copy. And, yeah, label obviously is under this. Print date from December 19th of 1992. Very rare tape, very good condition. Feels like it's never been really used. At least the box does. So, very happy to have this in the collection. Actually, I had no copy of Tron up to this point, even on DVD. And finally, for the Disney tapes, we got Lady and the Tramp, the widescreen edition. I've been looking for this one, and I found it yesterday. It is also meant to come with, I believe... Oh, wait. Behind-the-scenes bonus footage of the Siamese Cat song recording? Hmm. I didn't know this had that on there. I think it was also meant to come with a booklet. I don't... Maybe not, but this is a really cool tape to find. I haven't had this in the collection, and this is the only version of Lady and the Tramp I'm really missing. Well, apart from the 2006 VHS, but yeah, not getting that anytime soon. Uh, print date from September 16th of 1998. And yeah, like I said, I'm very happy to get this. Only other widescreen edition tape, I believe, Disney released. I mean, like, yeah, that I know of. Anyways, that was it for the tapes. Now on to the four DVDs, starting with Catch Me If You Can, Tom Hanks, Leonardo DiCaprio film. Got this for a pretty good price. I've wanted to see this. I've heard it's funny. It's a DreamWorks film. Two disc. Pamphlet. Uh, chapter list, of course. Always wanting to add more comedies to my collection. Especially because, for me, it's so hard to find comedies. Like, they're either extremely inappropriate, or their humor just doesn't connect with me. So, yeah, I am very happy I found this one. That's that. And then next, we got Man in the Iron Mask on DVD. Uh, cover. I can't tell if that's the cover or if... Oh, wait, no, that's part of the background. Uh, this is a film I've never seen. I've heard good things about it. I need to watch it. Yeah, found this. Eight-page booklet came with it, which is nice. And then we have uh, Jack London's Call of the Wild Foxfire. This is one I got at the Savers. All the other DVDs, by the way, I got at the St. Vincent's de Paul, except for this one and the last one. But, yeah, this was a really cool find. Disc, no pamphlet or anything. Very good condition. I uh, haven't heard of this called The Wild Story, so I'm hoping this is good. And it's not like one of those garbage, low-budget films, but we'll see. And finally for the DVDs, we have X-Men Revealed. This is a X-Men, I guess the last stand bonus disc. Um, it looked interesting when I tried to watch it. I couldn't really hear it, so I'm going to do it on my player at home. But very happy to get this. You also got a little pamphlet and the disc itself. You got Wolverine, Storm, some of the other X-Men members from the original trilogy, of course. And yeah. Very happy to have this. And then we've got four Blu-rays and 4Ks. I'm just dumping them in together. Uh, actually, two 4Ks and two Blu-rays, starting with uh, this one. Zack Snyder's Man of Steel, the Blu-ray and DVD combo. Four discs, which is pretty amazing. Or not four discs, but four hours of bonus features. Uh, I actually rewatched the movie on the way home, on DVD, of course, because I don't have my Blu-ray player in the car. And it's a good movie. Uh, here's the two disc. Obviously, the second time watching it, I see more of the flaws. And this was also at a discount price. Um, as you can see on the slip, it was on the clearance aisle, but yeah. There's that. And sorry if there's a lot of editing in this video. I'm doing this in one shot, and it, there's some stuff I want to cut out. Uh, but then next, I got this at another Half Price Books. That was the one, I believe, in Dublin. This is the one from Fremont. The Amazing Spider-Man. DVD and Blu-ray. Now, I want to make this very clear. I'm not a DVD Blu-ray kind of person. 
I I don't really like Blu-rays that much, to be honest, but I've started to grow more into them because they come with bonus features. Like, all of this, I can't get on Disney+. Plus. This film isn't on Disney+, Plus, so I either have to try and find it all on YouTube or get the Blu-ray. And, you know, I figured, why not? It was only $5, probably about lower than I would have actually paid if I ordered it. But here's the first disc. Uh, disc 1, disc 2, and then the DVD, of course. So, yeah, I actually really like this disc artwork, by the way. This is back in the old days where they actually cared about artwork on disc. Um, and then we have Star Wars The Last Jedi, 4K, Blu-ray, Ultra HD, and digital. Now, why did I get this? One reason. Comes with this, this, and then if you go under here, you have the actual Blu-ray. And that's the reason right there. I was missing the Blu-ray. I had gotten that Last Jedi set um, about two weeks ago for $3. I, I still don't regret it. I think that was a great deal. You get a lot of stuff with it, but it didn't come with the Blu-ray movie. So I bought this at Half Price or at Sabres, and I plan to actually sell off the 4K and the bonus disc. Because I don't want those. I already have the bonus disc. Someone else might want the 4K or whatever. So, yeah, I, I plan to basically take the disc I need and then sell it off. Um, and then finally, we have X-Men Dark Phoenix. Uh, the 4K. I wasn't wanting 4K, but eh, it's what they had. Trust me, I went to two half price books and only one of them had the film at all. The other one's just like, nope, we don't have that currently. So I got this. Uh, Ultimate Collector's Edition. Comes with two discs, lots of bonuses. And I mean, it, it's cool. Um, but yeah, if I do get the X-Men films on any format physically, which I plan to, maybe... Uh, I plan to get them all on Blu-ray, except the original trilogy. The original trilogy has bonuses on the DVDs, but the other ones, like, if you want bonuses, you have to, uh, actually, you know, go ahead and, well, buy the Blu-ray, because they're not on Disney+, Plus, which is really stupid. But, anyways, here's the two-disc, Blu-ray disc, 4K disc. Honestly, I really like this artwork. And I like the color blue on here, but seriously, this studio had enough money to make the film, so they can spend a little bit of money on the disc artwork. Like, I, I don't get why it's so ugly. But, you know, then again, no one really looks at it. Like, no one, you know, ever takes the disc out of the cases and is just like, ooh, look at my beautiful DVD artwork. I mean, at least I don't, but I won't judge you if you do it. Anyways, that is it for this update. Um... I would say my top picks, honestly, for this update, I don't really have any. They're all pretty high highlights. I'm especially glad I got those tapes, all of those. These are pretty cool. And by the way, I might get rid of my Man of Steel DVD and my Amazing Spider-Man DVD now that I have this. Like, why keep the old versions? Because cause here's my rule I'm trying to make with collecting. I will keep multiple versions of the same movie, but I won't keep multiple versions of the same exact movie. What I mean by this is like Fantastic Four, for example, has the theatrical and extended cut. I have both. I'm not going to just keep the extended. I like having both in my collection. But if the movie itself is the same and it just comes with an extra disc or something, I'm going to get rid of the one I don't need because why take up that room, you know? Anyways, that is it for this video. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.